morning. Almost ready. Welcome to another Sunday morning coffee chat podcast on EB. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Hey, thanks. I already got a thumbs up. Man, that makes my day. You know, that's the first thumbs up I've gotten today. <laughs> Thank you, whoever did that. Oh, we got two on. Outstanding. Three. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you. Just to sum it up, I think we're doing really well in the mango department. Despite the fact that it was very dry, a very dry June, really, in Florida. But this is our dry season. This is typically when we see a lot of a lot of storms uh, start happening in the later part of the afternoon. But before that gets really into a cycle, we typically have a bit of a dry spell, and that that's what we've had. Now, I love gardening, and obviously, <laughs> this tree is beautiful. Tommy Atkins tree is a big part of my life and recently I tried to graft a Edward mango branch on to the one of the branches of this Tommy Atkins and uh, failed failed brutally that is not gonna work what I did was I went on Amazon I'll leave a link down in the description to what I got if you're interested but I ended up getting a really cool pocket knife, which is a, I think they call it a rose cutting, a flower cutting knife, a floral, a floral knife. I think that's what it's called. It's a Victorian Ox, which I love that brand of knives. I got one of those, which is more or less a, a, a thicker blade, a single blade in a, in a hand knife, a pocket knife and a folding knife. So that was one thing I got and then the other thing I got was two rolls of grafting tape and you can see the grafting tape is on here it's this clear type a lot of people use the black in what I saw but I didn't really find that so maybe that was the flaw but grafting is a new area that I want to get into Jack actually was the one who sparked the interest and I started to uh, explore it so I've grafted a bunch of things I thought maybe I would show you some of these grafts and how they go I'd encourage you to experiment in your yard you know any success you see in my yard is the result of probably 10 times order of magnitude failure that you don't see. So I like to just point that out because to me that's a uh, key part of the gardening experience is to keep experimenting, building systems, trying new things out, seeing what happens, and then enjoying the abundance eventually as you figure out the system, but just keep pressing forward. So, you know, obviously this one didn't work. I'll try again. I did something wrong. I wasn't sure if it was good to graft it this far out on one of these branches. So I've got a lot to learn. If you know things about grafting that'll help me out here, please share them. I've actually got two Tommy Atkins rootstock trees that I grew. You know, pits just sprouted. What I do is we, we throw the, the mangoes into that bed there a lot of the time when they're rotten or squirrels eating half of one. And then some of those grow and I'll dig them up and put them in pots. I've done this before and well I've never grafted them but the idea is I'd like to take that rootstock from the Tommy Atkins seed which by the way these are monoembryonic seeds and that's a fancy word to me which I don't really understand what it means exactly other than I know that uh, if you plant fruit seeds that are that type you don't get fruit which is true to seed. And that doesn't mean you won't get fruit. That doesn't mean the fruit won't be good. It just means that you can't count on the fruit that the seed produces being like the fruit that it came from. You know, I wouldn't let that be a, a game stopper for you. <clears throat> it hasn't stopped me before. I've grown grapefruit trees from seeds and, you know, the 15 year old grapefruit tree producing zero fruit, but it was a beautiful tree. That would have made a great rootstock to graft on something even better. 
but I wouldn't want to waste that kind of time with a mango tree just because they take up so much space and uh, I have such limited space. So when I choose a tree like this, it's got to be something I can fit into my yard and that I'm going to get something from or at least some chance of getting something from. I've got a lot of friends that have beautiful mango trees of varying varieties. There are so many mango tree varieties within a quick walk or drive of my house and uh, I could literally just walk up on a neighbor right now that has a mango tree blooming you know, full of mangoes and say, hey, would it be okay if I take a cutting? And nine times out of ten people will say yes. And if you're going to do that, my technique is <clears throat> I will bring some things to give them. But I don't tell them. I don't try to make it like a trade. But uh, I'll you like this. This this is a green sugar cane, green chewing cane. By the way, very easy to grow. A ton of videos on the channel about it. If you're interested, you can see the redness of the sugar. This when they get old like this. But this one is ready, ready to go. It's got these little root knobs all along the sections. Very easy to grow from a cutting. Really, the you know, you'll see all the details on the video. But essentially, you section it and then orient it in the dirt and keep it in loose soil and they sprout almost every single time so what i'll do is take some cuttings of that and uh when i find a cutting i'm getting from somebody i just hand over a few of those and say hey maybe you know i thought you might want to get some cuttings for me and that always creates a great situation even if they don't want the cutting the gesture is certainly always appreciated in my humble opinion oh look at that Everything goes back into the yard now. Everything. Except for the branches. And some of those branches are even being utilized now. Like this really cool fig branch roosting bar. You can't get one of these on Amazon. <laughs> you gotta grow that sucker. That was a big one. <laughs> big branch that we took off. But figs are very flexible. Very cool wood. And the chickies love to roost up on that thing. It looks just like a piece of debris. It's a good example of of really permaculture concepts in practice, in my opinion, is you're reutilizing. But when these systems come together and interact to me, it is fascinating like few things are. It's so deeply satisfying to see these things happen. Like the chicken flock will come and interact with the fruit tree branch, which has been grown for 20 years years or whatever that's on the ground that has certain qualities that help the chickens and then they create and then there'll be other systems like vegetable gardens herbaceous vegetable gardens let's say under story type stuff in your food forest and uh, this will happen that's what happens when chickens interact with red beets they just get decimated absolutely every bit of vegetation eaten off but i don't mind that necessarily all that nutrients went right into my sweet little chickies that are growing fast but if i want to have a vegetable garden system look at my, my moringa are sheltering under this oh, poor pathetic charlie brown moringa trees uh, there's still hope for them but boy they are struggling i almost want to give up on them to be honest oh, check out these hawaiian papayas Doing quite well. This came right off of that guy. Might plant some of these on the side of the house. They get big. No Monsanto seeds here. <laughs> Meaning we're buying papayas from the grapefruit store, just chucking the seeds into the sandy soil, and here we are. That was one of the easiest things possible to grow. And I want to give you an update on this Baringa tree. I'm encouraging everybody to grow their own multivitamins. It's so easy. This is a Moringa tree. It took me about four months to grow. You can grow one too. They grow from seeds very easily. I've got a few videos on how to do that. So you can check out. I'll try to remember to leave a link on this. But look at that. You can just pick off those leaves. Tastes a little bit like uh, spicy. Almost like a mild horseradish. And eat them. And they are super high in nutrients. You can make a tea out of them, dry them. A lot of people do that. Uh, I would say just eat them right off the tree. And if you know 
what's coming in and out of your yard, you can do that. Yeah, so I'm not using any pesticides or any herbicides. Pretty much not using anything with side in it. I just figured that that's a good thing to avoid. Yeah. That cardboard getting ready to be processed for the worm farm. See all these Amazon boxes? Brown cardboard. <clears throat> that is an incredibly valuable resource. This brown cardboard. And I leave it out to soak a bit. You can use it as a weed barrier. Ugly. But you can. The worms will eat it right up. That's worm food 101. Get that stuff wet, get it torn around the edges, and it, it will be consumed. I moved my worm farm, finally, to be under this shady cover. Just getting some worm tea the other day. I redid it, and I added a whole bunch of... Oh, look at that. <laughs> Yeah, I stirred it all up and added in lots of cardboard. That was a good amount of cardboard. And checked it. The worms are in there like crazy. My yard now is absolutely bristling with worms. Uh, if I don't, I see my little chickies with worms hanging out of their beak every morning now. And Jack and I looked for worms prior to this system being in place before we started to put worm tea everywhere and seed our yard with worms. And uh, there were no worms, none. And part of that problem was the fact that it was very dry. I had really not been keeping up on the irrigation in certain areas of the yard. And in Florida, you just, you have to do that. Uh, you, you have probably pretty restrictive watering laws if you're in Florida like I do so you just figure out what those are operate within them maximize natural waters wherever you can you can get into a rain barrel system you know I haven't yet just because I, so many of my friends have done the rain barrel thing and regretted it and these are people I value their experiential wisdom oh do you hear it you hear it? I made this chicken coop because the one at Tractor Supply was too small, I thought. So I decided to make it. Well, I could have bought four Tractor Supply chicken coops probably for what this thing cost. Mm, three maybe. Yeah, it's cost over a thousand bucks to build. <clears throat> I'm not to go get that coffee. My throat's getting a little dry. But I built it exactly the way I want it now. And this system will produce lots of food. Lots. It's already producing nonstop joy. And uh, I'll disclose right now, I'm not a carpenter, but I love woodworking projects. So that's kind of a lot like a monkey playing with a hammer. Sometimes it comes out really good. So, yeah. The title of the video is, and if you stayed this long... I appreciate it. Thank you. Please hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're not already. Thumbs up helps me. But that we are more like a whirlpool and that we are an instance existing in a stat in a point in time, but things flow through us. All the food we eat flows through us, just like the water flowing through that whirlpool. And the things we interact with flow through us, not just in terms of food, but in terms of emotionally, you know, on and on and on. So, without getting too philosophical, let's let these chicks whirlpool. <laughs> oh, I can hear them. They're starting to get kind of anxious chirping pattern now. Pauses. I speak chicken. Very careful to keep this thing all the way up now. Yeah. And there they go. I'm free range every morning for a little while. Let's see if they'll do the my chick chick. Oh yeah, they come right up. Oh, yeah, little pecking order action going on. They get out of the cage, they usually ruffle their feathers a little bit. You see the see? They'll be doing this. They're still establishing their pecking order. 
which is something that chicks do. You know, you can watch, I've read, to see if it becomes kind of dysfunctional, but I found these little chickies seem to be working it out. I mean, they're, they're not really very pecky. and They're not pecking at each other's face or pecking at each other's feathers, which I like. They might do a little bit, but they really don't get stuck there. And, yeah, see that? They do that, where they puff up their feathers and extend their necks, and just like people. <laughs> exactly like people, but in chicken methods. And uh, they work it out, you know? Where, where are you on the pecking order, you know? Uh, this one, Ponzi, that big hen here, that's my top hen. Jax is one we call Blondie. But Ponzi, we named, we named her Ponzi because she was always, even from a tiny, tiny little chick, out and on her, on her own, independent, natured. Very, very strange. Always the first, would wander away from the flock, independent, strange. And as I'm saying this, it, it makes me think back on the period of time I'm reflecting on here, which is less than two months. Chickens grow so fast. It's, yeah, again, totally fun. Recommend it to everybody who can work out such a thing to get chickens in their lives. It won't make sense for everybody, certainly, but for me, it makes a lot of sense. It's one of the best things I've done in a long time, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, so these chicks... figure out where they are in the pecking order and then exist pretty peacefully. And you can see this, they, they do just graze around, they chew on a little bit of grass, but mostly they're looking for bugs. They love this corner of the yard. I can be expecting eggs here in about three months, three and a half months, and I can't wait to share that with you, but each one of these hens, 250 eggs per year. So you can do the math there. It's a lot of organic eggs. Stoked, I'm, I'm actually talking about systems overlapping systems. I'm actually integrating this system of producing what is essentially a superfood, eggs. Cholesterol is excellent for brain function. The, the protein, of course, is excellent for everything. Just an amazing food source. And when you're getting them organically, you know that what comes into them, there's that whirlpool concept again that flows into you and flows out of you is Is as natural as you can reasonably know. Let's see if they'll do the. I made a short. I've been playing around with YouTube Shorts, which is a fun thing. Let me know what you think about that, by the way, in the comments. If you've seen any of those shorts, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure not everybody likes the format change, but I, I know a lot do. I, I couldn't believe it. How many, I released a bunch of these, and some of them are up to like 3,000 views in a week. You know, I. I didn't get that kind of uh, response on some of the longer form videos, so interesting. Maybe, and I saw that a lot of new people were introduced to the channel that way. You can see subscribers versus people who have never been to the channel in the YouTube analytics. So, interesting. If you have any questions, post them up on the live chat. Let's see if my, yeah, so, anyhow, I posted these shorts, and one of them was the, and we'll try it here, which was the Zen Chicky Chant, which was something goofy I just made up when I was with Jack, and uh, let's see if we can do it. We'll see if we can call him in. Now, this, the chant, the, not the chant, the, yeah, the chant. <laughs> no. The sound is, let's give it a try. Come here, chick chick. Come here, chick chick. Come on, chick chick. Come on. Come on, chick chick. Totally not working. Oh, serious black. Chick chick. You chick chick. You chick chick. You chick chick. Oh, look at you. Yeah. Sweet little rooster. There they go. No worms. We're going back to the. Oh, but serious black. What a great rooster. 
what a really great barred rock plymouth rock heritage chicken brewster this is part of our collective history these birds they really are uh, no joke that plymouth rock bird has been grown in america for hundreds of years You can think of all kinds of things, but uh, an animal like this that is tightly integrated into the human experience that provides just incredible bounty and abundance through eggs and meat and fertilizer and on and on and on and on. How incredible is that? Now, we discovered that one of the chickens that we bought, one of the chicks at Tractor Supply, was actually a rooster, which has been fun, but yeah, that serious black, man, he just... He pulls at your heartstrings because he's so he's just such a rooster. <laughs> he's got all the qualities of the rooster, which is, but not too much, which is he will, you'll see him kind of off to the side of the flock, but he's a real protector. He's a real leader. He'll go out and be away from the flock even more so than Ponzi. You see, it's the first one to come when called. First one to hang around when everyone else leaves. First one to fly. He will actually fly up onto my arm already. So, not looking forward to giving old Sirius Black away to the farm. But, it's got to be done. I have a local farm that is standing by to take them. And really, what are you doing with these animals? Well, they live for those little uh, Rhode Island Red hybrids that I have, the golden birds. Those, I've read, will live for about two and a half years. This is a pretty short lifespan. Um, these, the Plymouth Rock, the Bard Rocks, my reading has shown they live for about four years. Seems like, but I don't really know. Never had owned chickens, so we'll see. So they're not going to live that long. The Cornish hen cross, which is used for meat, chickens, will get to be 12 pounds in eight weeks, eight to nine weeks. Just to give you an idea of the lifespan and the incredible growth rate of these beautiful, beautiful birds. Yeah, this is Ponzi. Ponzi actually scraped the top of her chicken foot on the door. The door came down and scraped the top of her foot. Ugh. Got a little scab there. It scraped her foot. Yeah, I was glad it didn't in any way seriously damage her foot. As you can see, getting around just fine. Come here, Ponzi. Come here. Come here, little chick chick. Come here, chick chick. So I read what to do when your chicken hurts, has a hurt foot. And uh, there's a lot of information online. And like, you can imagine how ridiculous that question is to a farmer. <laughs> but anyway, thank you to the farmers that jumped on some of these forms and said, your chick's going to be, f your chicken is fine. Uh, it'll probably heal. No problem. If it doesn't get another chicken. And uh, the process that we used was... I just treated the wound, you know, it was bloody. I treated the wound with hydrogen peroxide, cleaned it out well, and then I I did attempt to put a little band-aid on there. That didn't work out. I took that off, and then I just, uh, to cover it up, because anything anything you put on the ground or on these birds that's different than what's around it, they'll peck at. They just instinctively peck at, so they were pecking at that, so I got rid of it. They'll peck at the scab on the wound, too, so you have to be careful. But the birds will instinctively, I noticed, hide that wound from the other birds. I saw Ponzi was putting that up and under her. She would just, you know, animals kind of know what to do when they get injured, and Ponzi would just lay down a lot more for a couple of days. And Anyway, so I cleaned that wound out with hydrogen peroxide, and then I put Vaseline on it. And that... that did the trick. Ponzi's back 100%. Oh no. You chickens, get off my chair. Chicken chair. I don't I would love you being up on the chicken chair if you could simply 
not relieve yourself. You've got to learn some manners. Oh no. See? Can chickens fly? Yeah, they sure can for short distances. Oh, look at this beautiful little Rhode Island Red Hybrid. Look at them. Man, you are pretty little birdies. Yeah, they can fly, certainly. How far can a chicken fly? Well, not that far. But the bigger they get, the farther they fly, which is why you need to clip their wings. Uh, chicken's wings are something like your toenails or your hair. So you can trim them. And they have flight feathers that are longer than the other feathers. I could try to capture one, but there's no way I'll be able to handle it with the phone in my other hand. But uh, as you extend the wings out, you know, you see the primary flight feathers that stick out farther than the rest, and you can trim those. I'll do a video when I do mine, because I've never done it before, but it's called clipping their wings. And the flight feathers actually tuck down in the bird, so you never actually see the flight feathers when they're just walking around. And the only time it affects them is they can't really lift off very high when you take away those flight feathers. And that'll prevent them from doing something like a stunt that they're imagining already which is flying over this fence. They'll fly over a six foot fence, no problem once they're full size. Both these birds are very strong birds. And you can see I've got this little jungly part of my backyard, which they love. This is one of their favorite places and have branches like this. And they're already loving to perch up in these branches, natural perst, perch, roosting bars. But this one is a little close to that that fence, I was looking at the, this the other day thinking, could they fly over the fence already? Really don't want to have to go get a chicken out of my neighbor's yard, do the shameful knock. Uh, my chickens are in your yard. I don't want to be the deliverer of that news. I would rather be like, hey, just wanted to give you some eggs. You know what these are? Anybody know? Type it in the chat if you know. I'll show you flower that it comes from probably won't show up that great on this phone look at that beautiful flower now this before I tell you what it is I'll tell you a little bit about it these are very easy to grow here's another type of related to me it's not related actually botanically but it's related category easy to grow small fruit that category so these fruit these little delicious cherries will just shower down they've been showering down the chickens been pe have been pecking on them they've been composting naturally and I eat them a lot and uh, we're gonna eat a few things today in this Sunday morning chat this is just the first one This, I'm told, has the highest vitamin C content of any fruit. That's what the that's what the inner webs tell me. I like the idea. And so this is like taking my vitamin. You get a few seeds out of each one, and they grow pretty easily. I'm not sure if they grow true to seed. Not sure. But I'll tell you what they taste like. It's like a little bit milder version of a cherry starburst candy. If you like the cherry starburst candy, you'd probably be a fan of the Barbados cherry. That was a Barbados cherry. Well, two. Barbados cherries. So what else is coming in this? All right, let's walk over here. The big tree is going off. Look at these figs. That's a good looking fig. Mmm. 
absolutely delicious. Now you know why I have five varieties of fig trees in my yard. Oop, but look at that. See, we get a lot of rain. The end, the hole, there's a hole at the end, it starts to open. Now, no bugs are in there because it just opened, but that that's a, that's a bit of an issue. Now, everything loves the figs, including the bunnies. Hey, Thumbs. It was rainy last night, so how you doing, buddy boy? We're going to let you out to run here in a minute, but how about a little morning treat? Here, fig. Want a fig? Oh, I know you do. You want to get out and run. I know. I'll leave that fig there. He'll eat it. Good morning. Yeah, we had a heavy storm, so I had to come out here. <laughs> Make sure that that tarp was tied up over the rabbit cage. And it was. Get ready to get out and run. We've been actually letting the rabbits run in this part of the yard, so they've really been getting a lot of good exercise. It's so fun. Hey, Chicky Chicky. Oh, yeah. Chickies love figs. You, 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 uh, hey. Hmm. Well, so if you were wondering if chickens like figs, I think the answer is pretty clear. And it's interesting, they actually really love the, the sweetest fruity part. <laughs> you see a peck at my thumb, where I <laughs> injured thumb. <laughs> It'll peck at anything that is slightly different than the surroundings. There you go, <laughs> yeah. All right, here's another one. All right, chickies, want some more? Here you go, chick, chick. You chick chick, you chick chick, come on chick chick. All right, well, Fonzie did it all. Oh no, that's Sally the Sea Monster. Shout out to Justin Rhodes for coining the term my sea monster, I believe. Oh. A little snack for the chickies. So there you go, brown turkey figs. Now, certainly we could eat mangoes, but one-handed, that's going to be a little tough. Uh, several mangoes, ripe mangoes, fell out of the tree last night. Just got to pick those up and polish them off, but, you know, that's a championship mango in every respect of the, the term. Mmm, I can just smell the deliciousness. And there's bucket of the small we call them apple mangoes but just kind of throw away mangoes we compost those so all the stuff will go right back into the into the yard there you go add it to the compost bin layer after layer after layer i said it i've said it before i'll say it again these compost bins are a source of amazement for me how they continue to compress down now I've been growing just some pots in here because it keeps it away from the chickens, but they just continue to go down and down and down. I, I am astounded at how much organic matter you can put in these things. I thought when I filled it up to the top, oh, okay, well, that's it. No. It just keeps compressing and keeps compressing. This is gold I'm making here. Absolute gold, abundant, wealth. That's what is happening. It's converting from all this stuff I would have thrown away is converting into the best soil imaginable. And that's how you do it. And there's layer. This is a story. This is a layered story of progression. Now chicken bedding's getting layered in there with all that chicken manure. We've got to clean out the chicken coop today. Change their bedding in there. It's pretty easy to do that too. By the way, it doesn't the way I built this thing? I can just uh, open up the side door and shovel out the bedding into a bucket or whatever. So makes it very easy. Uh -oh. <laughs> I hear a dog on the other side of the fence growling or scratching or whatever, and you can see all the chickens at once froze when they heard that.
Well, okay. Going to get on with the day. Thanks for checking in on another episode of a Sunday morning podcast. Appreciate you. Let me know what you think in the comments. And have a wonderful day. Hope this motivates you to add some of these cool things to your life. Keep watching. Eat your backyard.